This is chapter 5 of the Book of Kin by Vladimir Megre, from book 6 of the Ringing Cedar series. The history of mankind is told by Anastasia, Vedism. People have been living on the earth for billions of years. Everything on the earth was created perfect right from the start. Trees, blades of grass, bees, and the whole animal world. There is a direct connection between everything living on the earth and the entire universe. The apex of creation is man, and in the great pristine harmony of all things, man was created harmonious. Man's purpose is to learn about all his surroundings and create perfection in the universe, to create the likeness of the world of the earth in other galaxies. And with each new creation of his to add more splendor to earthly creations, the way will open up for man to create on other planets when man is able to overcome temptation, when man is able to hold in unity the grand and diverse energies of the universe inherent in himself, and when he does not allow one of them to take precedence over the rest. The day when the whole earth is a paradise garden will mark the opening of the path of creation in the universe. And once man becomes aware of the whole harmony of the earth, he will be able to contribute his own splendor. Man takes it upon himself to take account of his actions once in every million years, whenever he makes a mistake, whenever he allows one of the many diverse energies he contains to dominate at the expense of the rest, a global catastrophe takes place. Then everything starts again from the beginning. This has happened many times. One of mankind's million-year periods may be divided into three ages. First, the Vedic Age, second, the Age of the Image, and third, the Age of the Occult. The first age of human society on the Earth, the Vedic, lasts 990,000 years. During this age, man lives in paradise like a gladsome child, maturing under parental care. During the Vedic Age, God is known to man. All God's feelings are inherent in man, and through them, man is able to obtain any advice he needs directly from God. And if man should suddenly make a mistake, God is free to correct it simply by giving a hint, without disturbing the general harmony or infringing on man's freedom in any way. In the Vedic age, man does not raise questions about how or by whom the world, the universe, the galaxies, along with his marvelous planet called Earth, were created. Everyone is completely aware that everything around, either visible or invisible, has been created by their father, namely God. The father is everywhere. All that grows and lives are his living thoughts, his program. And one can use one's own thought to commune with the Father's thoughts, and one can contribute to his program, provided one first understands it in detail. During the Vedic age, man did not bow down before God, nor was there the multitude of religions which sprang up afterward. There was a culture to life. People lived the divine way of life. There were no diseases of the flesh. Feeding and clothing himself in a divine manner, man simply did not think about food and clothing. Thought was otherwise occupied with the excitement of discovery. And no rulers reigned over human society. There were no boundaries marking off states as today. Human society on the earth consisted of happy families. The various continents were inhabited by families. They were all united by their aspiration to create a space of splendor. There were many new discoveries, and each family, upon making a splendid discovery, felt the need to share it with others. Families were formed by the energy of love, and everyone was fully aware that a new family would create one more oasis of splendor on their native planet. There were many rituals, holidays, and carnivals among the people of the Vedic age, each imbued with great meaning, sensitivity, and a conscious awareness of the real divine existence on the earth. Each ritual served as a grand school and a grand examination for each man that took part in it. An examination in the eyes of others, in the eyes of oneself, and consequently, in the eyes of God.
We're more dedicated than ever to provide authentic, truthful, and uncensored information and inspiration. That's why we created the Inspired Community on the free speech platform Locals. There is no censorship, a free flow of information, and it's more personal and intimate. And you can join us as a free member or a paid supporter. Please visit inspired.locals.com and join us today.